my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Lent begins with a reflection on the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. The church assigns temptation stories to beginning of Lent because temptations come to everybody, not only Jesus. Today, the catechumens will celebrate the rite of election. This is a very critical stage in the life of the catechumens because they are going to make a radical decision to elect Christ as a Savior and Lord before they are baptized. For the rest of the church, even though we are already baptized, this decision needs to be renewed as well. In truth, many of us, like the Israelites, chose the Lord, but over the years we have lost our relationship with Him. Instead of serving the Lord our God, we have served ourselves and the kingdom of Satan. Consequently, during this season of Lent, the Church invites us to consider whether we are willing to choose Christ our Lord, the resurrection and the life. Are you ready to make this confession of faith from your heart, not just on your lips? It is not even an intellectual answer that is required, but a confession of faith from the heart. What is asked of you is whether you believe, not whether you understand. How then can we make this act of faith? It is important to take note that in every rite of election, there is a double election that is being celebrated. God will not ask us to choose him unless he has first chosen us. As we read in the, in the gospel, in this love of God who made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be in the expiation for our sins. Indeed, this has been seen throughout the history of salvation, beginning with the election of Abraham as the father of the chosen rice. We read that God chose Israel out of all nations to be his people. They were nomads who became slaves in Egypt. However, the experience of Israel was that God was a compassionate God. He set them free from slavery. He established the covenant with them and made them his people. Indeed, God chose them to be his people, made them into a nation by giving them land and king. He brought them out of Egypt on eagle's wings and establish them into a kingly, priestly, and profiting people. And when the people were unfaithful to the covenant again and again, God forgave them. Finally, in Christ, God renewed his covenant with Israel and the entire humanity. In Christ, we are elected once more, not just Israelites, but the Gentiles too. As St. Paul says, those who believe in him will have no cause for shame. It makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord who is rich enough. However, many ask for his help, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The election of God in choosing us to be his people entails that we also make our response to his gracious overture of mercy and love. This is the second election. God, who has for all eternity chosen us in Christ, now invites us to choose him in return. His selection is effective only when we receive the invite. St. Paul urges to be decisive and definite in our choice for Christ as our Lord. Indeed, for Christians who believe in Christ as a risen Lord, 
in the Son of God in our hearts and confess him publicly in our lives, no one can tempt us from our fundamental orientation in life. It is because mainly do not really believe in their hearts, perhaps if at all only in their minds that Jesus is Lord, that they do not have the confidence to proclaim and confess his name publicly because they know it will be hypocritical even to say so. This called different and diffidence allows the devil to tempt us and others to lead us astray because they know our faith in Christ is still weak and uncertain. Today we are invited to make that fundamental choice with the Lord Jesus. Our Lord has shown us the way to make our decision for God. At his baptism, the Father confirmed his choice of Jesus saying, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, upon hearing these words, immediately began his mission by fighting against the kingdom of darkness. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he went out into the desert and faced Satan directly in the battle between serving God or serving self and the world. So too, we are called to confirm God's election of us by making that fundamental decision for God in Christ Jesus, as all other secondary decisions in life will flow from this certainly of our belief in Christ. We will do everything and anything only for the glory of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like Jesus, we will only seek, do the will of God in all our decisions in life, big or small, in the way we think, talk, act, and judge. Christ will be a determining factor in all that we do. And from then on, we will offer whatever we have, our resources, our finances, our time, and our total self for the service of his kingdom and for the love of his Father. That was certainly the case of Jesus when he was confronted by the three critical secondary choices after committing himself to his father. In the temptation story, Jesus was asked to make a choice of being a slave to the material needs of the world and attending solely to the things of this life. Or to recognize that the human person needs more than food and material well-being, but God's word. Hence, when challenged to turn stone into bread, Jesus sharply told the devil off, saying, Man does not live on bread alone. Jesus would not use his power to benefit himself, but only for the service of the kingdom. Jesus chose service of self. This is so unlike many of us who use the resources, talents, and wealth or influence we have for our personal benefits rather than for the glory of God, his church, and the service of humanity. Secondly, the devil tried to distract Jesus from his mission by offering him glory and power and the things that the world seeks. But Jesus made it clear that glory and power belongs to God alone, not man. No man can find satisfaction and security in earthly glory and power. Hence, as mentioned in the scripture, the Lord said, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Jesus chose God over the world. What about us? Let us think this matter today. Do we worship money, career, power, fame, and status? Or is our primary concern the search for God and his kingdom? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Matthew 6, 33. Finally, in the next common temptation of man is to, be, to doubt the love and the mercy of God. Many of us keep questioning God's love for us and his divine providence. We are always worrying about tomorrow. 
on the hand we call him father but we do not believe in our heart that if god is our heavenly father he will know how to look after us and provide what we need to be truly happy in life but we want things our way we keep on testing him like the israelites in desert that is why we find no rest satan knew that if he could make jesus hesitant about his father's love he could make him waver in his decision but jesus knew his identity as the son of the father and he knew the father's love is faithful hence he rejected satan's temptation to test his father's love and question his identity as son it has been said you must not put the lord you are go to the test jesus chose faith in him rather than doubt it must be noted that the secondary choices that jesus had to make in the desert resurface in different ways throughout his ministry repeatedly but they were all grounded in his love and devotion to the father this is equally true for us we must not think that we are confronted with such concrete choices of good over evil only before baptism but this goes on at every moment in our lives yes the devil will keep coming back to tempt us away from our fundamental principle to serve god in our lives as well consequently today we are asked to make our position clear before god his church and our fellow men whom do you choose to love and serve the decision must be firm and decisive otherwise we will continue to stumble and fall along the way especially when temptations come how can we be firm in our decision for the lord for us christians it is by contemplating on his love and mercy for us in his passion and death and experiencing the power of his resurrection in our lives in so doing we too will be able to make that same conclusive choice for christ because we believe in our hearts to help us strengthen our choice for the lord and our love for him we are invited to make these 40 days in lent a journey of dying to our sins and freeing ourselves from our bondages by contemplating on the mercy and love of christ on the cross and aided by prayer penance and giving we will be able to surrender ourselves more and more to his love as we continue to grow in intimacy with the lord after making our election for him today we will when our love is deepened and flourish at easter we ready like the apostles to converse with our lips that jesus is lord and be sent out to the whole world to proclaim the good news of salvation to all humanity we too will be filled with the same spirit that empowered jesus in his ministry god bless you